Okay, I didn't pull it too much. I'm gonna pull it a little bit more. Oh, angry now, and look at that. <laughs> that is awesome. Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we are taking a look at the LYZRC's L100. It is a foldable 5G Wi-Fi, one kilometer FPV transmission, 2.7K camera, two axis mechanical gimbal, electronic image stabilization, 26 minute flight time, dual tilting rotor, v-copter ready to fly so taking a closer look at this thing it has only two arms in a v shape instead of the usual four arms found in a quadcopter it has 30 amp escs with the 1506 1700 kv brushless motors with the dual bladed floppy props that are the leaflet design there's led status lights on each of the motor pod and the motor pod will tilt forward and backward in unison or independently from each other to control the bicopter's pitch, the roll, and yaw. Now in the front we have the 2.7K HD camera with electronic image stabilization mounted on a two-axis mechanical gimbal and has 110 degree field of view. Now it will record 2K photos and 2K videos to the micro SD card if a micro SD card is inserted and it will record 1080p photos and 720p videos to the phone app and thus into the camera roll of your device. The phone app is called the VS GPS Pro app, a free downloadable app in the App Store, so go ahead and check it out. Now, the camera can be remotely tilted to about 80 degrees, almost straight down, and also about 80 degrees, almost straight up. So you can get shots from above or from an aerial perspective or below the desired object or from a so-called worm's eye view. On the bottom, we have the four silicon rubber pads to stick that landing. And we have the optical flow sensor camera system for horizontal positioning when flying without GPS. And there is a white LED light on the bottom as well. And finally, in the rear is the battery bay. Just press this little button here, pull it out to remove the battery. Now the battery is a 1800 milliamp 
7.7 volt 25c battery which is said to be good for about 26 minutes of flight time charge it up via the type c port using the provided charge cable now the on and off switch is right in the center in the back of the battery so short press to check the charge level and that is indicated by four blue led lights long press to power up the battery there are some red led lights built into the battery and long press to power the battery off and this is exactly how the quadcopter will power on and power off as well so simply slide it back in and it will click into place now the remote controller doesn't have any pull out hand grips on the bottom but it does have a pull out phone holder and also flip out antennas it has the flat black exterior finish and it does have contours in the back for a comfortable grip now the antenna on the right side does have an antenna wire running up the antenna but the antenna on the left side does not now the antenna interface inside is a ufl ipex connector so it is easy to upgrade the antenna so on the left shoulder we have a rotary dial that is to remotely tilt the camera tilt angle and a dedicated photo button on the right shoulder is another rotary dial and it is to remotely change the camera filters yeah camera filters and we also have a dedicated video button in the front we have the lcd display screen with the familiar mjx style display we have the gps slash optical flow sensor button and we have a button with the letter p in red and a short press will initiate the compass calibration with this button and a long press will initiate the emergency stop we have the speed control button speeds one and two can be had we have the sliding power switch and we have the return to home button both sticks to the bottom and out will arm and disarm the motors of the bicopter and both sticks to the bottom and to the right will calibrate the gyros of the bicopter charge up the 3.7 volt 600 milliamp size built-in battery via the micro usb port in the rear with the provided charge cable okay here we go with the demo flight of the lyzrc's l100 the bicopter or the y copter so let's go ahead and push in the battery all the way power it up okay the esc's have sung their song turn on the remote automatically binds so let's go ahead and turn on the phone app go into the settings go to the wi-fi section of the settings and connect to the xg steam-2 wi-fi network and it is already connected and the phone app is called the vs gps pro free downloadable app in the app store go ahead and check it out you need to open the network permission to connect i already connected so here we go and we got wi-fi fpv so there we go it is a phone app so you can enlarge it enlarge the screen but well, it doesn't want to do that so i'm just going to leave it just like right there all right so let's go ahead and calibrate the compass so long press the p button over here or kind of semi long press it there you go and what it looks like is i've done a compass calibration in this location prior to this just to check it out so i don't think it wants to do a compass calibration but uh the compass calibration is as follows after you have initiated the compass calibration with that red button uh, after it beeps you rotate it horizontally 360 degrees for a couple of times until it beeps and once it beeps you rotate it vertically another 
360 degrees a few times and another beep is heard. And once that other beep is heard, you are done calibrating the compass. Okay, but it looks like I don't need to do that because it's not letting me know to rotate the bicopter on the phone app, which it usually does. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is calibrate the gyro. So both sticks at the bottom and to the right will calibrate the gyros. There you go. And the red lights flash really fast. And I guess the, uh, the camera already got calibrated. You don't really need to do the gyro calibration. Somebody's racing down the street over there. Okay, the light is still blinking. Takes a while for it to calibrate the gyros. And there you go, the lights have turned solid. And now the white LED lights on the bottom is flashing. So compass calibration and gyro calibration has been done. And looks like I got eight satellites on the satellite count. I'm gonna screen record. One, there you go, screen is recording. All right, so here we go. We can go ahead and check it out here. Let's check out the camera. Oh yeah, it looks very nice and smooth. Okay, let's tilt the camera or roll the camera side to side here. And <laughs> look at that, the gimbal is really steady. Let's do some pitch. Oh yeah, it's nice and smooth this one. Got a very nice two axis gimbal plus electronic image stabilization to boot. So we're gonna have some nice smooth videos looks like. All right, so let's take some photos here with the phone app. And let's take a photo right here. Okay, it takes a while for it to save the photo and download the photo. A windless day this morning, so very nice. It's been windy like the last week. So I wasn't really able to fly this thing. Okay, photo there. And photo here. And even though I'm tilting the camera down towards the ground, I still got horizon, level horizon, 50-50. 50% sky, 50% ground because of the two axis gimbal. Very nice. So if you want to catch, capture the ground, you can tilt the camera angle. If you want to capture the sky, you can tilt the camera angle up on this one, all the way up to 80 degrees. All right, so taking some photos there, I'm going to go ahead and record a video so let me go ahead and hit this button over here there you go recording a video so I'm gonna come back to the phone app I'm gonna leave it on the table over here we'll be back for it in a little while now let's go and check out the L100 so let's see if it flies okay so both sticks at the bottom and out will arm and disarm the motor so let's arm the motors Oh, look at that. It's calibrating the rotors. Oh, and the motors turn on. All right, there's no one key to take off, so manually taking off. Oh, and it has a safety timeout as well. So this antenna has the antenna wire running up it. So this one, I want to tilt it up just like that because I hold the remote control like this, and I want it pointing straight up. This one, you can leave it folded down because this is a fake antenna. So let's arm the motors and... Whoa, 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 whoa. It has a backward drift as soon as you take off. So when I let go of the sticks, yes, it does have GPS position hold. It, it is wobbling just a little bit. It's just got dual motors. And it is amazing how this thing is steady like that. Doesn't quite yaw in place because the rotors have to adjust. But look at that, pretty decent for a bicopter, dual rotor copter. Nice. All right, so let's see what speed we are in. 
there. That's speed two, speed one. So you see the white LED light on the bottom flashing. It's just giving off constant flashes. It doesn't stay on or anything. And there's no button to turn it on or off. Okay, so here we go. Full pitch forward and let's see, full yaw. There you go, nice. A bicopter, guys. It's flying better than some of the quadcopters. Look at that. Ooh. Ooh, it went down in altitude after that turn. But it sped up like crazy at one point. So I can kind of see that it depletes battery once you start making turns and going fast. And it drops to the ground, so be careful. Give it some altitude. There you go, speed number one. That's pretty good. And letting go of the sticks has a slight rear drift. And now that comes to a halt and holds its position. Pretty good. Speed number two. Two beeps. Full pitch and full yaw. I'm going to give it a little bit of throttle too so it doesn't drop down in altitude because it seems like it's dropping down in altitude already. I can feel it. So there you go. Speed number two. And let's just go. Whoa! Boy, it just pitched forward like crazy. Because of the tilting rotors, once in a while it tilts too much. So let's see, speed number two, normal speed. Whoa, 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 whoa. Woohoo! Okay. <laughs> Look at that. Looks more like a fixed wing airplane. Oh, but it has some speed once you pitch forward and it gets going and the rotors tilt yeah it's got some speed all right all right so that was speed one and two i'm gonna go back down to speed one guys all right so let's turn it around and keep it like right about here let's check out the video i want to see how steady the video is Okay, do I have video pointed towards me? Yep, I do. Let's do some roll. Okay, the bicopter is moving around. Back and forth. Oh, see, it drops down in altitude there. But the video is pretty much steady and it's completely crooked. Mm. The gimbal is kind of off, way off. Okay, let's wait for a little bit. Okay, let's see if it straightens itself out and slowly looks like it's straightening out. So let's do some camera tilt angle here. Okay, there we go. Camera tilt angle. Okay, almost straight down 80 degrees, almost 90 degrees, and going up. It just has a single speed servo, and look at that. I can go all the way up, almost, almost 90 degrees, up to 80 degrees, and I'm coming down, and look at that. Wow. <laughs> okay, let's go back up, and let's turn to the left because the sun is right up there. Okay, bringing it back down. There you go. You see the sun there now. I'm tilting up. Almost straight up. Kind of catching the side of the quadcopter or the bicopter's frame in the front. Okay. Tilting back down. And it looks like it kind of froze. Okay, there we go. Coming back down. Come on. It does not want to come down. 
Okay, now it's coming down. There you go. Okay, I'm gonna tilt it back up. Actually, I, I was uh, rotating the dial the wrong way. And it doesn't want to stop, it just want to keep going. I can't stop it. There you go, stopped it. Go up a little bit. Go up a little bit. There you go. If you hold it for a little too long, it will continue to go up or go down. Okay, so right about there is what I want. All right, so there you go. Now, let's go ahead and bring it down and establish our home point here. There you go. Holding the stick all the way down and the motors turn off. Nice, it sticks the landing as well. I'm, I'm impressed. It flies really nice. Okay, so that's going to be the new home point. So let's go ahead and arm the motors and take off. And looks like the rear is heavy. The back of the quad, uh, bicopter is heavier. So it kind of goes backwards a little bit on the takeoff, but it readjusts. And look at that. It's holding pretty steady now. Okay, so let's turn off the GPS. So now we only have optical flow sensor and it does have a drift. The optical flow sensor is not working very well because it's just drifting away. Oh man, it's just drifting away. And it just wants to go. Okay, let me turn the GPS back on and it is slowing down and holding position. So you need to have the GPS position on on this one and it's flying back this way. Okay, so there we go. All right, so let's leave it right there and come back over here. And what I'm going to do is stop my screen recording and restart my screen recording. Three, two, one, boom. Okay, just to have that saved. All right, and also what I'm going to do is stop the video recording and then restart the video recording so I have that saved. Yeah, I can still see that the uh, gimbal is slightly crooked here. Okay, it has about 26 minutes of flight time, so hopefully we haven't wasted that much. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out the return to home. Since we already established our home point, I'm gonna hit the return to home button. And it is rising up in altitude. Oh, turns around pre-designated height okay there you go I think it's gonna miss the landing pad by a lot no no look at that it's making adjustments as it's coming down and it slows down right at about oh, seven or eight foot level and lands itself a little fur farther away from the home point but it is still nice and it sticks stuck that landing too so pretty nice let's go ahead and check it out one more time I'm gonna pitch forward as I'm taking off because it has a rear drift or rear pull probably because of the weight one more time I'm gonna hit the return of home and the memory suit should be fresh because we just took off. Turns around again. So far this thing is really nice. It flies really good. I am impressed. I am very impressed. And it just comes right down like, look at that. It wobbles a little bit, but man. Okay, this time, a little bit closer to the center of the home point. Nice! 
Okay, so this time, let's take off with the forward pitch so it takes off straight forward or straight up. Okay, and this time, let's check out the fail safe return to home. Letting go of the sticks and it takes a little bit, but it's holding position now. So I'm going to test out the fail safe return to home. I'm going to turn off my remote controller. Let's see what happens. Hmm. It doesn't look like it's going to come home. So this is one of those copters where you need to have the Wi-Fi connection lost as well. And since this thing has a 1,000 uh, meter uh, FPV transmission distance and a 1,200 meter control distance, the Wi-Fi will disconnect at 1,000 meters. And then as it's traveling towards the 1,200 meters, uh, it will lose connection. And since it will lose connection with the Wi-Fi uh, signal as well as the remote control signal after the first 1,000 meters, then it will initiate, I am thinking. All right, so it is not coming home, guys. So I'm going to turn the remote control back on and let's see. Yes, I have regained control of it. All right. Pretty decent. Wow. Very nice. Let's do some FPV. Ah, this thing is nice and smooth. Wow. I am impressed. Some quadcopters don't have this smooth flying characteristics here. Let me yaw a little bit. Ooh. It says seriously low battery, force return landing. And it's turning around by itself. And it is heading back home. Awesome. Very nice. Coming right back. It should be right above me. There you go. Beeline back to where it took off from, sort of. Holding position. Repositioning itself. And will it land? It did say seriously low battery. But it is now thinking about coming down. It is holding its position. but it is holding position, not thinking about landing. So I do believe this may be phase one of low voltage. Let's see if there's a geofence. Pushing it out. And continuing to push it out and it is not moving beyond that point. So about 30 meters or so is the geofencing and I'm turning around coming this way okay let me uh, veer to the towards the field over here and there you go it's continuing to go and hit the geofence right there and it's hovering right where it is and I'm pitching forward okay so that's the first phase of low voltage it does not come back home and it has a geofencing radius of 30 meters. Look at that. It flies so nice. <laughs> I am like in awe. It is a bicopter. Two rotors. Kind of looks like a fixed wing airplane with propellers wow technology eh look at that nice and smooth i wonder if the yaw is a little jittery a little shaky uh, vibratory on the video just dual rotors i mean even uh dji products has a little bit of vibration on the yaw factor on the video so 
So I'm just going to continue to fly around until the critical phase of the low voltage kicks in and let's see what happens when that kicks in does it come home and land or does it just land wherever it is it should come home but just in case I'll lower its altitude just a little bit and then uh, fly on this side where it's nice and flat. Okay, so I'm going to continue to do some FPV, I guess. I'll lower the camera tilt angle so I can see a little bit below. Oh, I've missed myself. Let me go this way. Looks like it just landed and I was doing a camera tilt. And there it is. I think it's bouncing up and down. And there it is. Oh no! It finally stopped and <laughs> it was going side to side and it hit one of the rotors on the ground. So there you go. That is the flight time of the LYZRC's L100. So let's take it back to the table here. So there you have it guys, the LYZRC's L100, the bicopter or the Y copter really really surprised me with this flight capabilities with just dual rotors that rotate to maintain its position uh it forward pitched really fast quite a few times and it went dipping down in altitude where i have to slow it down and throttle up to maintain its altitude but other than that it flew fantastic it surprised the heck out of me and the video quality from this 2k camera the gimbal the EIS is also amazing such steady video from a bicopter I was expecting the video to be jerky and with a lot of tilting motion and all that but <laughs> I've seen none of that so it is a fantastic little uh, machine engineering is excellent uh, the technology is so advanced now i mean to make a bicopter with uh, dual rotors that is just fantastic uh, for consumer electronic product so there you have it guys my review and test flight of the lyzrc's l100 the bicopter thank you so much for tuning in and watching have a great day and we'll see you again next time